up with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Hey, what's going on, friends? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. And of course, welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series here on this channel where I reflect on what's being said about Chelsea, which, let's be honest, is always a lot. I give you my opinion. More importantly, I ask for yours. Today we're talking positive news. Incredible scenes with both Ben Chilwell and Carney Chukwemeka returning to the first team at Chelsea. This is actually massive for us. We'll get into that as well. Andre Santos is expected to be recalled from loan. And Matos looks like he could be going on loan to Huddersfield, which might raise a few eyebrows. A lot of people think we could have used him actually so far this season, but it could prove to be a good loan move. Sell in, get comfortable, subscribe if you want to, hit the bell if you choose to. Do consider dropping a like, and I always read your comments, so comment as we go along in this video. I really look forward to reading all your thoughts. All right then, let's get into it. We're going to be going into the Andre Santos situation in this video. I wanted to plug a video I did on Nini's channel, Blue Lions uh, TV, where we speak about Andre Santos and loads of other stuff with the do's and don'ts of the January transfer window. Go check it out on Blue Lions TV if you haven't checked it out yet. It's a great video uh, by Nini, and I was happy to be a part of it. But today, we are going to start off with Matos to Huddersfield. An interesting loan move. We're going to cite an article from Matt Law of the Telegraph and see what's going on there. Chelsea have agreed a deal for Alex Matos, who has been part of head coach Maurizio Pochettino's first team squad, to join Huddersfield Town on loan for the rest of the season. Although the loan is not complete, Matos is expected to move to the championship club Huddersfield for the second half of the season to gain more valuable experience. Matos, a 19-year-old forward or midfielder, made his Premier League debut as a substitute against Fulham this season and has also appeared off the bench in the Carabao Cup victory over Blackburn Rovers. But with first team players returning from injury, Matos is likely to find first team opportunities harder to come by at Chelsea over the second half of the season. Matos has been an unused substitute over recent weeks, but the decision has been taken that a loan spell and a greater opportunity of regular football will now help his development. Chelsea signed Matos from Norwich City last summer and the team teenager has impressed Pochettino and the club staff with his performances and attitude in training. Huddersfield are managed by Darren Moore and are battling against relegation from the championship with the team currently one place above the drop zone. While Matos prepares to leave on loan, another teenager, Andre Santos, is expected to return by the end of the week. We'll get on to Andre Santos in just a moment. So yeah, Matos has been really, really impressive and a lot of Chelsea fans have wondered why not use him a little bit more, especially in certain games that we let get away from us. Of course, the game against Luton was a great example. Why not utilize this kid off the bench to actually put some fresh legs on? I mean, it's very easy to say in hindsight. Hindsight, of course, is 2020. But you, ever, you know, you never really know the dynamic of a game, how it's going to change with some young players on and inexperience, and it could even make things worse sometimes. Who would be a football manager, right? But this is a good move. Of course, Huddersfield enjoyed an excellent loan spell from Levi at Colwell. So Chelsea have got a good relationship with the club there. Uh, hopefully Matos can go play loads of minutes, keep them up, and who knows, be utilised as a Chelsea first team player moving forwards. Of course, he's impressed Pochettino, like Matt Law writes there. So that's really, really important stuff indeed. Um, yeah, you know, the move Movements starting to happen. The transfer window is open. There are movements. Chelsea are, of course, looking at strikers. We're looking at defenders, midfielders. Will we sign them in January? We're not so sure. Of course, returning players from injury is going to be a huge key factor here, as was uh, with this instance here, with Matos going to Huddersfield. Of course, Lavia will come back. Ugochuk will come back. And then the midfield minutes are going to be harder to come by. Although Chelsea is still in all three competitions this season, which is a good thing. Of course, we're playing Middlesbrough in the semi-final in the uh, upcoming days, as well as our home game against Preston in the FA Cup, which is an opportunity for some perhaps you know I don't want to say B teamers but some players with lesser minutes to get a go anyway let me know what you think about Matos to Huddersfield in the comment section below we are going to talk about the impact of the return of Carney Chukwemeka and Ben Chilwell in just a moment but I want to spend some time and talk about Andre Santos now many people have forgotten about Andre Santos of course he went on a season long loan to Nottingham Forest but it hasn't gone well at all although he's been training with them at the moment He's expected to be recalled to the Chelsea first team and I think probably be loaned out immediately. Now, this is really, really tough. It's turned into a little bit of a disaster loan for him. And we know all about those, you know, promising young midfielders having bad loans and ultimately ruining their Chelsea career. 
maybe time to reference Ethan Ampadu, who looked really, really good at one point. You know, Sheffield United, Leipzig, and a few Italian loans, but a couple of them in there were really, really bad. We need to remind you that Andre Santos is a bit of a superstar. Remember, Chelsea actually wanted to put him into the starting lineup, or in the Chelsea first team, rather, last January. You know, we wanted to get him into the side. Um, Graham Potter wanted him to play him, or that was the plan with the sporting directors. The paperwork couldn't get done, so of course he returned to his club and then obviously came back after winning the U20 South American Championships last summer, which, by the way, he captained his side to, uh, and they won the tournament, and I believe he was top goal scorer from midfield from like a number six position, which is absolutely incredible from the young Brazilian central midfielder. Chelsea have looked at him for a long time like this guy's a bit of a superstar. So when they bought, you know, Cesare Cassidy, both their profiles um, raised, you know, significantly since we purchased him. This is like some of the quiet business that no one's really talking about from Chelsea that's actually really positive. Of course, the sexy signing at the moment is Cole Palmer, and it's, despite being 40 million quid, he's looking like a bit of a bargain. But people aren't really talking about actually how intelligent the signings of Cassidy and Santos were. Of course, uh, Cassidy scored loads of goals from midfield as well. I believe he captained his Italian side as well at youth level. So leaders in the midfield. But Santos was the one that Chelsea wanted. Now, we, if we're to recall him from his loan, which is the sensible thing, I'm not entirely sure what the new manager, Nuno Espirito Santo's long-term plans are, but I think Chelsea should be just very mindful here. Recall Andre. I don't think he's going to play in this Chelsea side. I think, like I said, with Gallagher, Caicedo, um, Enzo, Lavia, you know, Ugo Chukwu and stuff like that. He's going to get very, very limited uh, minutes in the midfield. So I think personally, should it be possible, uh, send him on a loan to like a Portuguese side. Uh, of course, being Brazilian, he's a Portuguese native speaker. And Chelsea owners in Todd Bowley, uh, Badadic Bali, they're seemingly trying to make loads of relationships in Portuguese football. Of course, um, George Mendes, there was a meeting with him and Bowley as soon as he bought Chelsea. So they're really trying to you know, get amongst it over in Portugal. We broke our transfer record buying Enzo Fernandes from Benfica. They're trying to buy a Portuguese club or a stake in a Portuguese club, but looking at sporting at the moment. So they really have been around Portugal quite a lot. So you'd think maybe there's a club there that's a really good opportunity for Andre Santos to get some starting minutes at a high level in European football. That's what I think personally. I don't want people to sleep on Andre Santos because he's such an incredible player, really, really good talent, and the Chelsea scouts, hierarchy, sporting directors saw this kid as like potentially the one. The same way, maybe not to the same degree in terms of how well he's performed lately, but kind of sort of Kendry Pires vibes, you know what I mean? Now I know Kendry Pires is younger, he's still only what, 16 or 17, he can't join us till he's 18, but the Chelsea directors, they believe in youth and they believe in the capacity for young players to come in and perform and settle in long term. Long-term gain, short-term pain, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, there might be an erratic kindergarten at the moment, but, you know, if you play together for a long, long time as a squad, you, become a, you can become a really good team. And if you started when you were younger, you have more longevity there. Like, look at all the great teams. Look at that Real Madrid team that just kept winning. They all just kept playing into their mid-30s and late-30s. Now, that may be unsustainable, but had they been, you know, playing since they were very, very young together, you wonder if that could have been a, could have been a much more long-term dynasty. Maybe that's the plan with Chelsea here. Yes, when the first couple of seasons, it might be a little bit turbulent, but when they click, when they grow up a little bit, you got a decade of the good times. Sounds pretty good to me. Anyway, let me know what you think. Comment down below on Andre Santos, the situation there. Where do you think he should go? Do you think there's a chance he could still play for Chelsea this season? Do you think there's like another Premier League loan? I'll be very interested to learn your thoughts, so leave them in the comment section down below. And let's talk about returning players from injury. So, of course, Ben Chilwell and Carney Chukwameka have been pictured in full team training after returning from their respective injuries. This is huge. I want to talk about both players. Let's start, though, by talking about Carney Chukwameka. Now, perhaps the least obvious out of the two in terms of what this guy can bring, Carney, of course, was a bit of a peculiar signing for Chelsea. He had made a few appearances for Aston Villa, but not much. We were essentially buying like a sort of academy youth product from them. 
But this guy is very, very good indeed. He's tall, strong, he's quite dominating, but he's got very technical feet. Sure, he's not as like big and broad as Ruben Loftus Cheek, but he's kind of like that in terms of being an imposing figure, but having the ability to be technical between the lines. Carney Chukwameka looks more like a sort of very much an attacking midfielder rather than a central midfielder. He loves playing in the final third in the 18-yard box, and he combines really, really well. Of course, we saw him score that wonderful goal against West Ham, I think it is. I really need to double-check it was West Ham before he came off injured. And it looked like at the time that, right, well, if we're going to play a 4-2-3-1 formation under Mauricio Pochettino, this is the guy to play number 10 in the absence of Christopher Nkunku. Regardless, he just looked like this attacking force that we were leaning on in times of lacking of creativity, essentially. Essentially, at the time, it was almost like that time of the season's Cole Palmer. But I'd be really keen to see how a Noni Madweke on the right, a Cole Palmer in the middle, and maybe a Kani Chukwameka on the left wing all link up. You know, three young England internationals uh, at youth level linking up and, you know, again, like before, maybe developing long term. This is not me saying, oh, I don't think Mudrick or Sterling should play or whatever. Whoever plays well at the time, whoever is elevating Chelsea's level to the necessary standard plays. No more favouritism, ladies and gentlemen, but I think it's important to reference Kani Chukwameka Mecca because I've not really been thinking about him and this guy can offer a lot a lot a lot and uh, if he starts creating goals demonstrating a different profile in that final third not necessarily being like a winger that wants to run in behind but a guy that wants to sort of play in the box and make things happen and with Chelsea that's the kind of player I think we need lately because we've come up against a lot of deep blocks we can't score. You need someone to get in and amongst it and play in the tight spaces and score the goals. It's all very well having wingers that like to run in behind into space. You know, maybe a bit more like Mudrick and stuff. But if you don't have that space, you're in trouble. So the likes of Carney Chukwameka returning to the side can be a really useful asset off the bench. Especially with Pochettino, you know, using five substitutes of late. So lots of stuff to turn to there. And I do want to speak about Chelsea's vice captain, Ben Chilwell, returning to the side. Now, I'm a massive fan of Ben Chilwell. I really, really wanted Chelsea to sign him a little while before we were being linked to him. Of course, Frank Lampard really wanted him, brought him to Chelsea. And we never really looked back. He's an excellent left back. At the time, I remember saying, that he's probably the second best left back in the league behind uh, Andy Robertson at Liverpool and that's when we signed him as well of course he went on to win the Champions League put in an amazing performance in the Champions League final against Manchester City uh, what a player he is he can get back he's dynamic he's a leader but he makes those really unique inverted runs into the box and finishes like a striker uh, he really likes to come in on the inside as well which is just a really useful thing and you know Pochettino, of course, was looking to him as a left winger, probably because of that, you know, the way he plays and the way he attacks the box like that. Maybe he wanted, you know, yeah, Levi Colwell behind him to cover. Now, I don't want him to come back into the side and play left wing. No siree. And I think every single Chelsea fan in the world, if we saw that, would be very disappointed. Look at how Malo Gusto makes Chelsea better when he plays as a natural fullback instead of this back four of centre-backs. Whether Malagusto is playing as his native right-back, or indeed, of late, playing as a left-back, he makes us look so much better. So if we, and I know Reese Chambers is going to be out for a while, but if we can start games with Gusto playing as a right-back and Ben Chilwell playing as a left-back, I think that would be so big for us. Now, of course, Conor Gallagher's been doing a great job as Chelsea captain. Uh, he's a vocal player, probably more vocal than Rhys James. Uh, he's a good, well, he's quite a good communicator. He's a bit Essex, though, isn't he? But I've always said it, I sort of nailed my colours to the mask. Not to say Ben Chilwell should definitely be Chelsea captain, but in terms of his character, the way he holds himself and how he communicates as a, you know, professional footballer, it's very captain-esque. Do you know what I mean? He knows how to look after people. He knows how to... He put an arm around people but he knows how to like have a bit of banter but he's he's intelligent he's smart he speaks well and although he's not like Chelsea born and bred he loves being at Chelsea you know he calls Chelsea Chelsea he sort of integrated very very quickly he very much loves very very much loves Chelsea um I wouldn't be super mad if he became Chelsea captain I'm not saying he should take it from Reese James romantically I prefer the idea of Reese James being Chelsea captain but what he will bring from his reintroduction into the side Ben Chilwell is a little bit of seniority because how old is Chilwell at like 27 so you know look at the back line we've been dealing with of late children everywhere panicking against Luton going ah you know 
I've had enough of that. So get another grown-up back there. That'll be good. Uh, he is a grown-up at 27. He's in his prime. Um, you'd think he'd play well with maybe Thiago Silva um, or whoever's playing on the left. Maybe maybe left centre-back is um, Levi Colwell and then Thiago Silva or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I feel like he'd offer so much going forwards in terms of dynamism. He's not a defensive liability. He can be really good defensively and he offers so much in the attacking sense as well as just general team balance and leadership. For me, Ben Chilwell... Moonwalks back into the starting lineup. I'll have Ben Chilwell, you know, Malagusto in the absence of Reese James, and then whoever is behaving well, maybe like Thiago Silva. I do worry at times about Thiago Silva, but the way I can see him keep a calm head, I'm like, all right, keep the grown up in there as well until like someone else comes in, and then you can choose between your. Disassies, your Badia Shules, your Levi Colwells. Of course, you guys know me. When Wesley Fafana becomes available, I, you know, the, the, I suppose the dream for me is long term is Levi Colwell and Wesley Fafana developing a long term centre back partnership. But yeah, man, friggin' Ben Chilwell returning is absolutely massive. I think it could be at least. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below about Ben Chilwell. Good news, generally I feel, guys. Sending young talents on loan to clubs where they can flourish, hopefully. Um, you know, sorting out Andre Santos. Let's not forget about this really talented guy. Carney Chukwameka returning, what he can bring. Vice Captain Ben Chilwell returning, what he can bring. Of course, there's developing stories all the time, this being the January transfer window. So do keep it locked here on the channel if you choose to subscribe hit the bell and turn on all notifications for this channel um yeah man I, I want you know i really enjoy bringing you guys the news so thank you for joining me if you want to follow me on socials i'm on instagram at football yannick and other than, other than that i'm out so see you guys soon peace